Hi guys, this is uh, Curve 14 for HUSNG.com. Today we're going to be looking at uh, a game I played at the hundreds against uh, Rag um, about a week ago. Um, so just looking at his stats initially here, um, we'll look at in position. Um, he's been raising about 65% uh, deeper. Um, his limps um, look to be middling. Uh, he's limp folded 14 or 14 times to a shove. Um, and limp called a lot of my non all in raises. Um, so he, he's limping hands like queen 10 off, uh, jack 10 off, jack 9 off, 10 8 off, things like that. Um, and that trend continues. Uh, he lessens his min raise range and limps likely more middling again. Um, 16 to 20 big blinds. Um, looking at 12 to 16 big blinds, uh, he min raises likely polar. Um, calling off about 55, 45% of my 3-bet shoves, so this is just air hands and value. Um, his limp range is definitely middling. I mean, folding 44 out of 45 times to a shove at this depth. Um, this is the kind of player you want to be shoving. King X, uh, low suited connectors, um, even low offsuit connectors, 5-7 off, 7-6 off, things like that are going to do very well against this kind of player. Um, he continues that trend shallow. Um, looks like he's probably lipping his uh, upper pop upper um, pocket pairs, aces, kings, queens, and then just trash. Uh, again, min raising polar, probably leading a bit towards uh, value. Um, and his open shove range is middling hands and suited connectors, so 7-6 off, things like that, 10-9 uh, suited, um, jack-10 off, something like that. Uh, and as we get down under 10 big blinds, he's mostly just open shoving. Um, and you can, you can start calling these open shoves quite wide, I would say even wider, a little bit wider than Nash. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Um, I'll just bring up a game here. Um, sorry guys, that wasn't the game I actually wanted to show. Um, so here's the game uh, uh, that I was looking at. Um, so initially he min raises here. Uh, we've got a 65% min raising range, so I've just put that into Icy Miser, what I think that looks like here, and I'll bring it over. Um, I think it looks something like this, and this is probably somewhere around his limping range. I mean, it could differ a little bit, but it's definitely in that middling range. Um, and it's about 7% of hands. So just looking at this jack-3 off uh, hand here, um, you could argue for a non in 3-bet here. Um, I don't think it's the best, I think it's better just to fold, but um, if I had a suited jack-3 or a suited 10, 10 deuce or something like that, I think I would be non in 3-betting here. Just looking at his range and looking at what he's doing, so he's 4-betting um, 27%, and how you can compute that is you just take your calculator, um, put in a 65% min-raise range, uh, so 0 0.65 times how often he 4-bets, so 0.27, and that'll tell you how much of his starting range he is 4-betting you with. So um, doing that in Icy Miser, uh, I'll just go back to that starting range I had. Um, hang on. Okay, and here's the starting range. So so we calculated that 17% of that he was 4-bet shoving. So you can just take the top 17% because um, they're, they're going to be 4-bet shoving that top percent. Maybe exclude aces or kings um, and just take it off the top. So 17% is about there. Um, we can probably throw back some of these hands. Um, King Queen off, and and maybe he just four bet shoves all his ace x, and and he doesn't four bet shove maybe aces and kings, um, and then to find out what he's folding, you just do the exact same thing and take it off the bottom. So you take a 0.65 or 65 percent min raise range, multiply it by how often he folds, which is 0.42. 
and so that's 27 percent so we just take this down to 20 percent from the bottom and you can get his flatting range um, now it doesn't quite compute it in the best way um, yeah AC Miser has some 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 troubles with that but so he's probably going to be folding some of these things you might have to adjust it for what you think uh, people like to call more suited hands um, and aces and kings are still in there so I would say it's something like that um, is his flatting range I think some of these hands I didn't have initially in his min raise range um, and then so initially pre-flop that three bet is not going to be profitable because you need him to fold uh, no, you're investing 90 chips if you three bet to 90 um, you need him to fold about 70% of the time for it to be profitable but by the time you factor in um, the C bet post um, it, it gets much closer um, again I don't think jack three off is the right hand to be not only three betting him here but you need to be doing that with um, your low trashy suited hands I think against this kind of player especially if he's min raising a little bit more closer to 70% okay so that's definitely just fold Queen X I'm limping here he's um, not very aggro at all against my limps I'm just limp folding to an ISO this is this is mostly value um, his ISO shove is going to be a lot of weak ace X and weak pocket pairs um, he's also folding a ton to my limp C bet so I'm stabbing all flops so I'm limping here with the intention of stabbing all flops um, and after after the flop I'm gonna be much more careful even though he has been folding turn and river his his hand once he calls flop is gonna be weighted towards value because he's folding so often to the C bet and he just folds there uh, min raising eight five off. Um, he's not. He's playing sixty five percent of hands, which isn't that much, and he's only three betting around twenty five percent of the time, um, and he's still folding a ton to my c bets. So yeah, we're c betting here. Um, this this I c bet small here to represent the ace x. I do this a lot on ace x boards. Um, but I do not think this is a good board to barrel off on. Um, especially against a reg, um, even even against a rec though. Uh, King X is going to be a huge part of a flatting range. I think it's even worse probably to barrel off here against a rec because um, some recs are going to definitely flat more ace X. Um, so they're going to have ace X and King X in their range and not that much six X. And the same thing goes with a reg. I mean, a reg's going to have a ton of King X in his range here and not as much six X. So you're not going to be able to, um, when you're barreling, you're not going to get very many folds from six X because there isn't much six X in his range and there's just a ton of King X. So I'm shutting, I'm intending to shut down turns here. And yeah, I just shut down. And when he bets probes river here, um, you know, he doesn't probe that often. This is this is King X when he probes here. Uh, King three off. I'm just flatting. Um, it's about 16 big blind seeps, so I think he's a little bit. He's probably uh, limping a little bit more middling hands here, um, and min raising a little bit less than that 65%. Uh, so here on Jack uh, eight three. Uh, I'm just check calling and I think you can check call quite wide given his C bet range. Um, his C betting range is quite polar uh, so he's C betting his value um, and all his air. His fold versus probe is only uh, 42% so his check back range contains a lot of ace x, weak pairs, um, maybe some weak 8x so if we just put this in a f uh, flopzilla here um, originally his, his min raise range was 65% because we're only 20 big blinds deep here I think he's probably actually limping some more um, of these type hands um, and just min raising a little bit less um, and it's definitely middling I mean we can see that by those numbers um, so the board came jack three eight of clubs 
So if we look at what his C bet range is here, I think he's definitely C betting set two pair, over pair, top pair, pocket pair below top pair, so tens and nines I think he'll C bet. Um, and some of his middle pair he is uh, I think gonna check back. So I think some of the weakest stuff he'll probably end up checking back. Um, weak pair, I don't think he's gonna bet his threes and I don't think he'll bet these pocket pairs below. Um, the, I mean, these are questionable as to where, whether or not he bets them, but I don't think he will. And his, his ace high, I don't think he'll, he'll bet either. I definitely think he bets all his air, all his draws. Um, and we get 84.2% right there, which is right around his min raise range. So we'll just lock that. Um, so yes, I check call here. And the turn comes a 7. Um, seven isn't the best card for our range. Completes some of his draws. Um, gives him, you know, he has a lot of seven X uh, in his opening range, or some seven X anyways in his opening range. Um, so he's he's made some pairs here. I don't expect him to bet his sevens here, um, and I don't expect him to bet very many of his eights here as well. But um, He's going to continue betting his jack X, uh, his draws, and I think he'll continue betting his air. And he does barrel quite wide. I mean, 60% is is um, getting up there anyways. So uh, if we look at what his range for betting the turn is, we'll just put the 7 in. Um, top pair, middle pair, like I said, I don't think he bets too much of his... 8x. I don't think he bets his weak pairs. Um, and he might bet his a size as a bluff, or some of them as a bluff. Um, and gut shots, he might bet some of his gut shots too. And over cards. We'll just say he shuts down with those because they're weak showdown. So somewhere around there, um, maybe a little bit less ace high because he does have weak showdown. And we get around 69%, um, just close to his to his turn barreling frequency. Maybe we can get rid of a little bit of air. And we'll leave it somewhere around there. Um, so he does bet this turn here. And we'll just look at the equity of king three it's fifty five percent against his betting range here i mean you have to be calling i think quite wide against this player i mean he's he's barreling quite a bit so i think you should be calling flop and turn quite wide um... and then giving up on some rivers because he's only he's only, by the time he gets to river he's betting a lot more value um... if you look use your calculator again uh, 0.84 is how much he bets the flop times 0.6 times 0.5. Uh, his river betting range is 25% of what his um, initial C bet range was on the flop. So that's a lot of value um, by the time he shoves that river. So he bets 80, we call. Uh, and the river comes an 8, which I think is actually a really good card for us because. It doesn't complete any more draws. Um, we don't perceive him to be barreling too much ace x. I think he's going to be giving up some ace x. I don't think he's going to um, shove seven x here for spin value, um, and I don't think he's shoving any three x. And we didn't think he was betting three x on the flop anyways, and we didn't really think he was betting seven x on the turn anyway. So those aren't really a big part of his range. So his range here is miss draws, jack x, and just complete air um, on this river. So if we put this in, um, and he's betting, uh, you, you see here he only has 20% value, and I don't think he would, he might shove tens and nines. Um, we can say he'll shove tens and nines, I guess, uh, but he's going to be shoving a lot of air on this river. And so I think we can easily just go ahead and call. You can see our hand has 63.65% equity against the shove here. Um, and he's just going to show up with a lot of air. And we only need to be right. Um, we're calling 248 
um, into a pot that is 320 plus 248 plus 248. So we need to be right here 30% of the time. Um, and we're definitely getting that. So he goes ahead and shoves, we call, and he actually shows up with these five off, which we really didn't expect to be in his opening range. I didn't really expect that to be in his range at all. So just kind of an interesting hand. Um, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching, and see ya.